Activity number one, communication and consultation. The purpose of communication and consultation is to assist the relevant stakeholder to understand the risk, the base on the which decisions are made and the reason why particular actions are required. It is a continuum and iterative process to provide, share, obtain information and to engage in dialogue with the stakeholder regarding the management of risk. Risk management is announced through effective communication and consultation when all parties and stakeholders understand each other's perspective and, where appropriate, are actively involved in the decision-making process. Methods of communication and consultation may include meetings, reports, online communication system and learning packages. Activity number two, establish the scope, the context and criteria. The purpose of establish the scope, the context and criteria is to customize the risk management process and enable effective risk assessment and appropriate risk intervention. How we should define the scope of our risk management activities? We should be asking which objectives and decisions need to be made, for example, or which outcomes are expected from uh, the activities, which resources and the responsibility are required. And finally, is there any relationship with other project process and activity in the organization? One, once you reach the goal, you can focus on the external and internal context where you can define the achievement of your objectives. Then you should specify the amount and type of risk that you may or may not take. Of course, this decision is based on a predetermined criteria. Don't forget that such criteria should be established at the beginning of the risk assessment process, so they can be dynamic and should be that they updated later. Activity number three, the most important activity, the risk assessment. That is the, the overall process of uh, risk identification, a process of finding, recognizing and describing risk, Risk analysis, a process of comprehending the nature of risk and to determine the level of risk. And finally, the risk evaluation, a process of comparing the result of risk analysis with the risk criteria to determine if the risk or its magnitude is acceptable or tolerable. Obviously, a successful risk assessment depends on effective communication and consultation with internal and external stakeholders. Activity number four. After the risk assessment, we can find the risk treatment. The purpose of risk treatment is to select and implement an option to addressing risk, such as eliminate, Avoid the risk by avoiding the activity. Invest in resources. I'm interested in the activity and therefore I invest the resources to mitigate the, the, this uh, risk. Transfer and share the risk through contacts uh, by insurance. Since I'm unable to manage that activity internally, I delegate externally. Or finally, accept. I am aware of the risk and I take it. Once treatments are implemented, the residual risk rating should generally be lower than the original risk rating. The level of res residual risk refer refers to the likelihood and the consequence of the risk occurring after it has been treated. Residual risk should be documented monitor it and review it. However, keep in mind that the risk cannot be completely removed. Activity number five, monitoring and reviewing. 
The purpose of monitoring and reviewing is to assure the improved the quality and effectiveness of the design, implementation, and outcomes of the process. This is based on two actions, monitoring and identify changing from the performance level required or expected, outgoing monitoring and periodic reviewing of the risk management process and its outcomes. And finally, activity number six, recording and reporting. The risk management activity and its outcomes should be documented and reported to update stakeholders and support top management. Another important operational tool for any management system is the timing cycle that aims at the control and continuous improvement of the organization's process. The timing cycle was first introduced from Dr. Deming in 1950, and it is also called PDCA cycle by the sequential action of uh, plan, do, check, act. The PDC cycle is a systematic process for gaining valuable knowledge from the continual improvement of a product, process, or service. The circle begins with the plan step. This involves identification a goal or purpose, formulating a theory, defining a metric, and putting a plan into action. These activities are followed by the two steps in which the components of the plan are implemented. Next comes the check step, where outcomes are monitored and to test the valid of the plan. It is a comparison between what emerged in the two step and what was established in the plan step. Through periodic audits, monitoring of effectiveness of the measures, new analysis of the context to identify any changes of the risk scenarios. The act step closed the cycle, integrating the learning generated by the entire process, which can be used to improve the goal, change its method, and reformulate a theory. These four steps can be repeated over and over as part of never-handed cycles of continual learning and improvement. Of course, this method can be applied or should be applied in any museum activities, including museum security. To sum up this section, we can say that risk management for cultural heritage is crucial for every museum. It must be considered as a process that includes several interdependent activities. These activities must be considered with a double view to the prevention. We have to prevent any risk. We have to reduce the probability of occurrence the risk. And of course, the protection, we need to be ready for the action to reduce the damage. I would like to give you an impression. Try to imagine the museum security as a liquid form, which must progressively wet and permanent everything found in the museum organization. Yes, this is because museum security is interconnected with all the other activities of the museum, such as welcoming the public, preserving, exhibiting, and promoting cultural heritage. So, the people who are involved in the museum security work in a closely synergy with all other museum professionals. They are part of a team of professionals who play one common game. They care about our cultural heritage.